entertainment. Hi, Jim. Ray. Allison's in Japan for two years, and we're going to go over and tell her. Thank you. 
Harold. Welcome everybody. It's good to be here in Ohio. If it was sunny, it would be better. Hopefully it's not going to rain. If it is, we'll pick up some umbrellas or we'll try and crowd into the pavilion. Uh, thank you very much for coming. We're here to celebrate Pat's life. Pat and I talked about it a lot before, you know, things happened and she said, I don't want a funeral. I don't want people to come and look at my body. I don't want to cry. I want people to celebrate and be happy. Be happy about my life. So that's what we're here for. If you want to cry, okay. But it's it's going to be a happy situation. Um, today's Pat's birthday. She would have been 71 years old today. That's why we chose this day. It's also Friday the 13th, which you know. <laughs> Tonight there's going to be a honeymoon, a full moon, okay? When a full moon happens on June 13th, it's very rare. The last time I think was 1919. Paula, do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> the next time this is going to happen won't be until 2098. I don't think many of us will be here then, but that will be the next full moon on June 13th. So happy birthday to Pat. Happy birthday to all of us. Okay, It's been another year for each of us. When you came in, hopefully you signed the guest book. And if you didn't get a chance to sign it, please, you know, take the time to sign it. Write something if you want to add a little bit more, like if you, ha you know, have a few more things you'd like to say. I know it was hard because you were standing in a line and you had to wait and wait and it was raining. So if you want to sign it, you can do it any time. Uh, she, like I said, she wanted this to be light, so that's what we're going to be doing. Kathy? Where's Kathy? Okay, we're going to be having some readings. This is my good friend, Kathy. She teaches at Kent State University. She teaches my favorite subject, <laughs> economics. Oh. No, <laughs> seriously. Can you hear me okay if I don't use the mic? Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm the lot you are. <laughs> That's what you're doing. All right, this, this is poem is called Feel No Guilt in Laughter. Feel no guilt in laughter, she'd know how much you care. Feel no sorrow in a smile that she's not here to share. You cannot grieve forever, she would not want you to. She'd hope that you would carry on the way you always do. So talk about the good times and the way you showed you cared. The days you spent together, all the happiness you shared. Let memories surround you. A word someone may say will suddenly recapture a time, an hour, a day. That brings her back as clearly as though she were still here and fills you with the feeling that she is always near. For if you keep these moments, you'll never be apart, and she will live forever, locked safe within your heart. Thank you very much, Kathy. I would like to thank, you know, it's so hard uh, when something happens like this, but you have family and you have friends and you have just people in your lives that you just can't thank enough. I'd like to thank my brother, Ray, who's done a wonderful job on the website. If you haven't had a chance, if you haven't had a chance to look at it lately, people keep sending pictures in, and so, you know, they'll be posted. He was, he's videoing today. You'll be able to watch this celebration. You'll be able to look at some of the pictures from the other people have sent in or pictures from today. So if you, if you lost the website, just email me or call me, and, and we'll get it back to you. Uh, thank you very much for the people that helped set up. My Tug friends, that's our golf league. We call ourselves Tug because it's called Totally Unofficial Golf. <laughs> and then every time we golf afterward, we go to Um, which is Unofficial Merriment. So today you see a lot of us have our Just Keep Swimming shirts on, and they'll be helping. Thank you for helping me set up and doing all the different things that we've done. Thank you for Julie and Kim for the, doing the guest book. Uh, the signs, Julie made the signs that were coming in. Thank you, Pam and George, my cousin. Where's Pam? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. They're hiding. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. Pam and George back there, they did the balloons that we will let go later on. And thank you very much for doing that. Pam's team just came in first place and raised the most money for the Relay for Life in Stowe. So give her a hand for that. Thank you to my friend Mary, who did, where's Mary? Mary. Mary. Peanut Butter Square Mary. At the end, we will be handing out peanut butter squares. And Mary and I started off making peanut butter squares. We did the first, I don't cook. Pat did all the cooking, okay? So I got the recipe, and Mary helped me, and we made our first batch of peanut butter squares. So then we made, well, Mary made 14 more batches. Uh, <laughs> each one of you will get a bag when you leave. So thank you, Mary, for that. Thank you for everybody that's helped uh, as you as you get finished with this and we're you know before you leave feel free if you haven't already browse around look look at the tables that are in there there's one table that has pictures of Pat's high school and there's a lot of pictures of kids that she taught in Chamberlain I don't remember who these kids are if you're a kid from Chamberlain and you see pictures of yourself feel free to take them because I don't know what to do with all those pictures if you want to take them all take them don't take pictures of Pat in volleyball though that that picture uh, look at the other items. At one table has Pat. She loved to cook. And she also was a messy cook. I was always the one that had to clean up. <laughs> there was flour from one end to the other. Uh, some of you remember Pat cooked in your kitchen, and it was like, oh, my gosh. But the food was always wonderful. Uh, there's pictures of uh, reading. She loved to read. Uh, she loved the dragon boating. We've got our little medal that we got a couple years ago for the dragon boating. Again, if you didn't say sign the guest book or you didn't write more in the guest book, please feel free to go back in and write a little bit more. Now, the bookmarks. Each one of you got one of these bookmarks, and I would like to thank my friend Mary Sweeney from Florida. She's not here now. She's at her class reunion in Cincinnati, but she paid for all these bookmarks for us, and Pat loved to read. So a bookmark was such a perfect gift to give out to people. On one side, it talks about Pat's birthday and the fact that she passed away on January 8th. And her favorite quote was always, everything happens for a reason. So whenever anything would happen, she'd say, everything happens for a reason. We'll find out what that reason is. So that was her favorite quote. She was a positive, loving, and caring person. 
and every life that she touched was made better. Now, on the back we have positive affirmations. It says P-A-T, positive affirmations today. Have you said your positive affirmations today? How many of you saw the movie The Help? Okay, May Mobley sat there on the Manny's lap and she said, you are, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. And Pat and I thought if every parent could say that to their kids instead of shut up and turn that TV down, turn off your <laughs> devices or whatever you're doing, it would be such a different world. So Pat and I started saying positive affirmations to ourselves, to each other. And on the back, these positive affirmations are the ones that Pat and I would say to each other every day. If you think about it, it really makes sense whether you say it to your children or your spouse or your parents. Just say, or even just to yourself, positive affirmations, okay? You are what you think about. You are what you believe. So hopefully all of you got a bookmark. The second thing I want to talk about is these t-shirts. All right, a good friend, um, as Pat was going through her battle of cancer for three years, hey, Carrie, if you guys want to come up and sit up here, there's plenty of chairs. April, we got seats up here. Anyway, uh, as Pat was going through her battle with cancer, her breast cancer surgeon's name was Dr. Blumenkrantz. And Lisa, right here, is a very good friend of ours. Pat relied very heavily on Lisa as she was going through this battle and she would get a different kind of medication or she would find out a different term and Pat would contact Lisa and Lisa could bring it down into layman's terms. By the way, she's getting her PhD right now in cancer molecular biology. She's almost done. When? In September? Soon. All right. Somewhere around there. Anyway, she might even have it now. Uh, one day Pat was not, you know, not doing very well and she was kind of down and Lisa said, you know what my family says? Just like what Nemo said, or Nor Dory said in the movie Nemo, just keep swimming. So Pat kind of put that into her updates and at the end she would say, just keep swimming and we kind of took that over. Then our friend Debbie, where's our Debbie? Right here, talked to a friend in Chicago who made t-shirts. Now, Pat and I didn't know about this, so we went to a football party at a friend's house, and there were like, I think, eight or ten of us sitting there. Pat and I walked in. We were the last ones to get there, which was very unusual, because I'm always the first one everywhere. But anyways, we walk in, we sit down on the couch, and they hand us these two bags, and they said, here's gifts for you. And we go, oh, thanks. So we open it, and it's these Just Keep Swimming shirts. We go, how cool is that? Oh, that's so cool. And then all of a sudden, all our friends took their shirts off and had Just Keep Swimming shirts on underneath. So here we're both crying, but that's the story of the Just Keep Swimming shirt. The next thing you know, Pat starts getting emails from Paul and Kathy in Florida or from somebody, a, a lady that she went to a workshop with in Iona, Scotland. Pictures from Michigan, pictures from Wisconsin. There's a picture of a girl laying on the, on a, the beach in Hawaii with a Just Keep Swimming shirt on this lady model thing she made out of the sand everywhere so it got bigger and bigger and bigger and more people and more people and more people in fact today i sent an email out to the people that can't be here because they're either in florida or somewhere else i said let's all put our just keep swimming shirts on and mail me a picture of them and we'll put that in the memory book or the website so i've already started getting pictures from canada i got some today uh, the one from nova scotia the other day which is also in canada anyway <laughs> Know my geography. Uh, it's just it's just a cool thing. So if you would like a Just Keep Swimming shirt, they're fifteen dollars. Where's Julie? There's Julie. She has a clipboard. Give her fifteen dollars or a check made out to me, and we will get you a shirt, whatever size you need, and your phone number, and I'll be in touch. But it's something that we all need because we all go through different types of adversities in our lives. And to think about the fact that if you just keep swimming, no matter whether you have a broken leg or you have somebody that has cancer or somebody that has MS, it's it's just whatever. So if you'd like to get a shirt, pick up here, show me around, and you'll be able to pick one up. Okay. We've got a few readings. First of all, Tyler, who's a very good friend of ours, will read up. Thank you. also a phys ed teacher. She was Pat's student teacher back in 1930. Love those pictures, Doug. <laughs> we remember a life today 
and all that made her who she was. All that delighted her, that made her laugh, or moved her to tears, calling to mind her story and the many lives she touched along the way. Thank you. My cousin Pam. We honor a life today. Her outlook, her inner strength, and the things that she believed in. Recognizing her goodness, her uniqueness, her own special gifts, shared generously with the rest of the world. Thank you, Pam. Pat's cousin Barb from Florida. We celebrate Pat's life today and her connections with family and friends and all who loved her. Feeling enriched for having known her and so grateful for our time with her for the way she affected us, inspired us, and affirmed for us that this is how a beautiful life should be lived. Thank you, lady. At this time, what I'd like to do is have you say some things about Pat. Uh, you know, this is our second one. This is the second celebration. I did one in Florida when I was down there, and this is the second one, the family and friends from up here. And if you would like to talk or say something about Pat, how she touched your life, a funny story or something, if you would like to come up and read or say it with a microphone, fine. If you just want to stand back down there and say it, that's fine, too. Somebody want to start? Taught us many things, and I know we all have reflected on those lessons. Her true calling was a teacher. As we move forward, we carry with us these lessons, and we pass them on to others as we just keep swimming. I'm reminded of a conversation I shared with Pat last summer on a trip to Chicago on our journey to northern Wisconsin. We were sitting out on uh, a friend's condo looking out over Lake Michigan, and in our conversation, Pat turned to me and said, this is life, looking out on the water and letting your mind go. You like to sit and gaze out and look at the water, don't you? And I said, yes. And she said, me too. I think that we could have sat there all night and as she looked at me, she said, but we better go to bed now. We have a long weekend ahead. Uh, always the voice of reason. Uh, I remember her telling me that because, like her, I love being near the water. And I guess the impact to me was just we could sit there quietly, be still, and we could share just time together and no words had to be spoken. Um, on our journey... We read, well, I should say Pat read, I drove. Uh, we read many books, and one of the books that I often now have always referred to her as my quantum twin was Why Quantum Physicists Don't Get Fat. <laughs> and in the, in the reading, there were six tools that we all need to remember so that we can get out of our fishbowl. Tool number one is always tell your best story. Focus, to, tool number two, focus on the feelings you want, not the actual things you want. Three, meditate 15 minutes at least each day. Four, still your mind as often as you can. Five, feel gratitude as often as possible. And six, create and celebrate success. John O'Donohue, who's an Irish poet, wrote this poem and it just reminded me so much of Pat. Awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence. Have joy and peace in the temple of your senses. Receive encouragement when new frontiers beckon on. Respond to the call of your gifts and the courage to follow its path. Let the flame of anger free you from all falsity. May the warmth of your heart keep your presence aflame. May anxiety never linger about you. May your outer dignity mirror your inner soul. Take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek you. 
Be consoled in the secret symmetry of your soul. May you experience each day as a, set, as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder. For my quantum twin and my AC, which is an Anamkaram. And like a frog, we all move forward. Somebody else want to say something? A memory? This is my friend Kathy from Florida. I met Pat, I met, I met, we met Pat and Jim, I met him in 1986. And beginning either that year or the following year, uh, with the exception of maybe two, we spent every Christmas together. And before uh, they retired, they would come to Florida during the Christmas holidays and spend three weeks with us. So they lived with us for three weeks. And we went on vacations together. We spent a lot of time together. And I'll tell you the one thing that I remember about Pat. She lived in the moment. Because we could be talking about a trip we all took to England. And we talk about what the hotel looked like. Or what was the name of that hotel? Or what was the name of that restaurant? She could always tell you. I can't remember what restaurant was last week. And, and I've always been like that. But she could give you detail. And it was because... Instead of thinking about the future or thinking about the past, she was there in that moment. And God, I wish I could do that because it, it is such a great way to live because she enjoyed every single moment. And I miss her. Somebody? This is Kathy, Pat's sister in law. <coughs> Sure. Thanks. <laughs> Somebody brought it to me. I love it. I miss Pat a lot. Um, I've been a Rainer um, for 40, almost 47 years. That makes me very official. And I was part of the Rainers when I was 14 years old. Um, I went to a dance with Don. Uh, he didn't speak to me all night, but Patty spoke to me. <laughs> I kind of remember that. But you know, in all Every single year, every time we were together, even when we weren't and we would just talk or we would just talk to each on their phone about where she was going and what she was doing and Jan and she always had adventures and there was always something about Patty. She never had a crossword. She always had a smile. She always had a positivity that I admired. I actually... I don't know if it was something, but I thought I looked like Patty. And I think my hands look like Patty's, if all of you know Patty's hands. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? You got that crook of your finger, got a little arthritis going on. But I couldn't have asked for a better sister-in-law. She was like my sister. I have one not wonderful sister, and we just added her to the Ulrichs and, and made her part of us. Not hard to grab her and hug her and hold her. Uh, Jan, part of us always, always. And uh, I, I don't know what to say except I miss her. I speak for all of our family. It's been very, very difficult watching the process that she had to go through because good people shouldn't have to do that. But certainly there's a place in heaven for her. Um, she gets right to the front of the line, and hopefully she'll put a little wedge in the door for the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Here comes Don. This is my boss. Yeah, her boss, her, her husband, and Pat's older brother. No, Pat was the oldest, that's right. Pat was the oldest. Her older of the two brothers. Hi. I'm the quiet one. When you uh, think of events like this, uh, there's a lot of melancholy, and, and obviously it's a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because uh, we are here to remember the life of somebody that we all cared for. Dave and I remember Patty differently probably than most of you because we grew up with her. And the unfortunate part is once you get older and you graduate from college and you go off on careers of your own, um, you sort of lose, lose track of, of one another um, because of events that happen in your life. Um, and, and that happened with Patty. And, and Patty was the kind of person that for the six months while she was working, we didn't see her very often as much as we had liked. And when she was uh, retired uh, as a blessing, she started going to Florida for six months out of the year. 
and then she'd come back to Kent, and it was almost like you had to call and get an appointment <laughs> because she and Jan were so busy helping other people um, that you really had trouble nailing her down for even a dinner. But we remember all the times where we decorate Christmas cookies with my mom and dad and decorate Easter eggs at Easter, and, and those are the things. Sorry. Um, but the only thing I pretty much know for sure is that although Patty died early and much too soon, she leaves a legacy and a hell of a lot of friends. Thank you. This is Jerry. Jerry's from Michigan. When we go to Florida, I'm sure he'll tell you, Pat and I were in a motorhome right next to Jerry. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 12 years ago it became the girls and the boys. What can I tell you? Actually, uh, this is going to be a little different. Um, Patty and I, unbeknownst to Jan, had a uh, weird relationship in the last year. Yeah, no, it's nice. We started talking about being able to communicate with people that passed on before us. So Patty knew I was open to that idea. Now Patty, as you've heard from other people tonight, believed in telling her story. And you make your own story in life. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. <clears throat> Patty believed when she would come back, she'd come back to the dragonfly. And the day after she passed, a dragonfly came to our coach. I ran over and told Jan, and I think I broke her heart because I had seen it before she did. And she hadn't seen one yet. Okay? But I knew what it meant. Because when she was in hospice, she called me over and had me sit next to her bed. And I sat there and said, hold my hand. And Pat and I had this nonverbal communication. She knew that Ralph and I would take care of Jan. And we did. And I thought that was it. Okay, Jan got packed up and we made plans and she came back to Ohio, and I thought that was, we had done our job. Wrong. <laughs> Patty wanted to tell her story. Starting from that point, strange things started to happen. So I'm going to ask you another question here. How many folks believe that people have passed before you can communicate back with you? Raise your hand. Okay, all of you that don't have your hand raised, I'm the crazy gray-haired guy that was at Pat's <laughs> celebration, okay? Just to clarify that. Things started happening. I kept getting this feeling that there was something that had to be said. I had no clue what it was. And one day I'm sitting in the sun porch, and I get this feeling again. And I go down to the family room, and there's a movie on. And when I turn it on, it's in the middle of a life celebration on a beach. Been there, done that, right? But I got out of that something that was said. Okay, fine. I'm starting to connect the dots in my head, even though crazy as they are. So I'm talking about it, and I decided I'm going to call someone in Ohio that had been with Pat on a retreat, and we talked about it, and I was confirmed that, yeah, Pat's want you to say something. There's something she wants you to do. Okay, fine. But today's the day. But I'm vacillating back and forth. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? I feel stupid. You know, that kind of thing. Well, the one day I hit the car in the garage, and I'm in front of the garage, and I put down the passenger window and the driver's window. Here comes a dragonfly in the window, on the dash, out the passenger win driver's window. Okay, fine. So now to the point, we joke around the house. Oh, Patty's here. Okay. <laughs> Thursday morning before coming here, we're having breakfast. 
and I'm going, Ralph, you know, I still, I feel kind of strange about doing this. You know, looks at me across the table and he says, Patty's outside the window. There's a dragonfly sitting on the window frame. So I, at that point, decide I have no choice in this. So, I have three things to say. And I really believe this is what Patty said at the end of her story. Danny, those hugs in Florida? Don and Dave, I'm not even going to look at you, but thank you for taking care of Jan. You came down, you took care of everything, I know she's okay now. And to all the rest of the family and friends, I love you and thank you. Anybody else? Bye. But um, I can attest to uh, what Jerry was saying. Just the other day, we were over in Net and Jerry's, and uh, we were some other friends, and they were getting us some food from Zeppies. And Jan and I ordered this, uh, if I say it right, agli olio. Uh, it's got like whipped butter and garlic. And Jan was totally looking forward to hers. And so when we get our food, it ends up being. Um, tuna casserole <laughs> well, if you know Pat you know she loves tuna casserole and Jan I open it up and Jan's like this isn't ours we didn't order this so Pat wanted us to try tuna noodle casserole we, we both ate it and loved it Jan's got some in her freezer left in. <laughs> anyway um like I said I, I know Pat because she was a mentor to me and she was also a very dear friend to me um she was a nurturer. She was a warm, loving, beautiful woman. During my student teaching, she always, always took care of me. Um, just like she did all of her student teachers. I mean, brought muffins, cookies, oranges, apples. You had to be ready for the day, you know? Uh, she also, she was wonderful to her students. I mean, she was a teacher that, like, like we said, she taught in the moment and, and she taught real. I mean, she believed in teachable moments. She used to do screen therapy with her uh, kids at school, which was, I thought, pretty awesome because the girls did it. They used it. And, um, you know, Pat was amazing on the floor. I remember one time I was, you know, for me, it was one, obviously I was in student teaching, and it seemed like an easy enough task. There were two volleyball courts, only four sides, right? So only two nets. And I was trying to divide, like, 28 high school students in it, and I'm like, you two go over there, and you four go over there, and they all start moving around in that. And I'm like, pretty soon I had like three there, eight there, like nine there. I, I couldn't do anything. Pat looks at me like, you want a little help? Yeah. And she's like, you two go there, there, there. The next thing you know, she's like, all right, you can play now. So it was awesome. But, you know, I had a chance to know her outside of uh, teaching as well, where we became friends. And Pat was extremely um, active. Most of you that know her know she loved to golf, she loved to walk, she loved to hike, she biked, um, she kayaked, she fished. I mean, she was good at everything she did. If you know her, I mean, she used to play horseshoes. I saw a picture of you, Don, playing horseshoes with Pat, and we all know Pat, I don't know how many ringers. She always, every time she threw it, she got ringers. It's amazing. You played cornhole with her, and what do you think? She got it in the hole all the time. I mean, we went and played ping pong. She beat you at ping pong, didn't she? And I mean, Pat was so coordinated. She was good at everything she did, like I said. Um, we know that Pat was a scholar. I mean, she read all the time, and she loved to share her knowledge. I mean, anything that she knew, she would share it to you. We laughed about her being on her soapbox. She'd be like, you can tell me to shut up. I know I'm on my soapbox right now. But the thing about her was she was justified. She didn't just pull it out of the air. Pat knew what she was talking about. She knew something about everything. And, uh, you know, we knew that she was a baker. She loved to make food for everybody. She loved to cook for people. And it's because she was a pleaser. Like, Pat, 
I've got more joy out of making you smile and making you happy. That made her feel so good. She got so excited about that. And uh, going back to her being on the soapbox, I was fortunate enough to be with Jan and Don and, and Dave her last couple of days with us. And so I asked her, I said, Pat, do you have any words of wisdom that you want to leave me with? And she said, instantly, she didn't even have to think about it. She said, find the joy in every day. She's like, Tiny, I know that life gets challenging. I know that the kids make you crazy, but you can make a difference. We know that Pat was faced with an unexpected journey. She was courageous, she was strong, and she was so optimistic. She still kept an amazing attitude. So I challenge you to follow Pat's words of wisdom. I'm blessed to have had Pat in my life. I am so happy that Dot and Bud Rayner got together <laughs> and they decided that they were going to have Pat because my life has been enriched by her. Jan as well. So I'm just very fortunate to have known her. This is Carol. She does water aerobics with Pat and I. Well, from um, May through October, Pat and Jan always do water aerobics every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. And there's a whole group of us here who love Jan, love Pat, and uh, we miss her. I almost always am a few minute, minutes late coming into class, and Pat and Jan are always a few minutes early. But every time I would come into the pool, Pat would be so happy to see me, and then I usually, Pat's tall, so she would be behind me, and I'd usually kind of sneak in and go sort of in front of her. And she always would say to me, Carol, I'm so glad you're in class today, because when I see you working, you work really hard, and it makes me work harder. So it's kind of like a cycle, of course, when I'd see Pat there, I'd go, boy, I better work really hard today because Pat's going to be watching. And then, then the instructor, then when we would go to the deep water, the instructor has us do a few other things, and Pat would always call me the motorboat. She'd say, uh-oh, I better get out. Here comes the motorboat. Um, and every day in water aerobics still, it's wonderful to see Jan, give, get a hug from Jan, and but I still feel Pat there. And when the instructor gives us a certain move, I almost hear her saying, here comes the motorboat. So of course I put on the extra steam and I just make my legs and my arms go faster. And I'm so grateful to Pat. And I love you too, Jim. <laughs> Anybody? Okay, here's Annette. This is our dear friend, Annette. She's battling her own issues right now. You know, I had something written down, and it's like almost everybody yep. has touched something on my piece of paper, which pretty much we are saying we're summing up. We know that she has touched us all in pretty much the same way. I, I was very fortunate. I came from North Dakota, and 27 years ago, I knew no one. I'm walking down the street in my flip-flops, as I usually did, to do my nightly walk, and I was living in the same neighborhood that Pat and Jan was at the time. And over time, we eventually got to meet and, and our friendship blossomed. Uh, most of you probably, um, I come from the environmental side of, of working, I'm not a teacher. And uh, I'll never forget when I started t talking to Pat about what do I do for a living. Okay, well, for all of you, I deal with sewage sludge. I manage sewage sludge. Okay? And, they, and, and Pat, you know, she took that and Jan, and they decided they wanted to come and visit me down at the plant. Can you imagine now? You have to understand, though, what they came dressed with. They had these helmets on, and they had these earmuffs on, and they came with all the protective equipment they could possibly have. It was a joke, but it was, they made, they, they wanted to become a part of what you were and what was important to you. And I really appreciated that. That was something I'll never forget that day. When we to that, to that door door. But I also, you know, Pat had a side to her where she really did want to care about everything that was happening to you. I remember calling their house one morning at 4 a.m. and said, what are you doing? Am I bothering you? 4 a.m. in the morning because I was having a personal problem. 
Of course, she, what did she immediately do? She invited me down for a bowl of oatmeal to talk about my problem. <laughs> Literally. I, I mean, it was unbelievable. So I knew Pat as one who taught me many life lessons through the everyday trials of living, and that was evident by her friendship. Always there when I was down and out to pick me up and look for the positive in my life. That is what she would do. She understood that peace in life came from understanding and accepting who we are at that specific moment in time when we are struggling. Like she would say, everything happens for a reason. Um, I'm not going to go into the story, but I don't know if, how many of you remember It's a Wonderful Life, the Christmas story. Okay. Remember George, who was played by um, uh, uh, Jimmy Stewart in there? Well, at the end of that show, if you recall, there was a couple of good life lessons. And I, every time I think of that movie, I do think about Pat. Because in there, even though it says, you know, one of the two, two things that were said was, remember, no man is a failure who has friends. I would prefer to say that one's worth is, is measured by the number of friends one has. And that's pretty evident by all the people that are here today to celebrate her life. And the other thing is, Peace comes from understanding and accepting who we are now. And boy, that was Pat. She accepted who she was in that moment. Um, so she is our guardian angel, and we will always be with us in spirit, and that we all will be taught by her that it is truly a wonderful life, evident by all the friends present today to celebrate the beautiful life of a woman who gave of herself to each of us in a special way, through her love. We miss you back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody else want to say something? This is Connie. Connie I also taught at Kent State. She's now, she's now retired. She lives across the street in a condo, and they c would come over and water the plants and take care of our condo all winter while we were in Florida. Thanks, Connie. They have plants in their condominium that are older than most of my friends. <laughs> and there's a lot of pressure on you when you have to water those plants for six months and keep those looking good. Pat never cared. She always said, Connie, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Jan did too, but somehow I knew Jan cared a little bit more because she's got such a green thumb. Anyway, it's so great to see so many people here. Um, as the old ad adage goes, um, you don't really always remember what people say or what people do, but you remember how they make you feel. And I think that's why we're all here today. She just had a knack, and it didn't matter what it was. You feel better now, Jerry? I'm the girl crier. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't matter what it was, you know, water aerobics in the motorboat, uh, man, she makes good cookies. <laughs> I mean, we did the three-day walk, walked 60 miles. The only reason I walked 60 miles, I think, was because we'd get peanut butter squares after our training walk. <laughs> and really, um, Tiffany, what was your favorite? Shortbread. Shortbread. Yeah. Those were equally, equally deadly in terms of the calories, but they were they were cookies that made you feel good, and that's what you remembered about Pat. You could be on the golf course, and you could shank one into a lake, water goes kaplunk, the turtles are jumping off the log, and she'd pat you on the back and say, well, just, you know, try to keep your head down. <laughs> There's always the next one. Don't worry about that. And it made you feel better instantly. I mean, you could golf like crap and walk off of that course and just feel good, but going to play with her. Our, our unofficial golf group, anytime a new person would come on, well, we got to put her with Pat because she'll make her feel good. She'll make her feel comfortable and she'll have a good time. Because people, you know, nothing like performing in front of folks and, you know, golf, you're out there all by yourself. And she had a way, it didn't matter what you were doing, it just, you just instantly had that level of comfort on the inside. And as I think about Pat, I think about um, when I first came to Northeast Ohio, like many of you are today, and I, I roll back the time machine and I think, what well, was before the GPS? And I never had to worry because once I met Pat and Jan, Pat, I'd be out supervising student teachers and going all these back roads and trying to maximize my time and be efficient, and I would get myself so lost. No iPhone, no GPS. I did have a cell phone, and you know, they were, at that time they were about like this. <laughs> and I would call Pat, and I'd say, Pat, I'm out by Streetsboro, 
somewhere between Sturgeboro and Twins. And she would go, give me a landmark, give me a landmark. She could give you a sense of direction and a moment's notice and tell you not just where you were, but where you needed to go. And I have to say, I think about that notion of her being a compass for so many of us on the back roads. And I really, I really honestly feel that that was both a, in a figurative and, and literal sense that she is our guide. And I so look forward um, to being able to live my life in a manner that she did. I'm so proud to have been her friend, and I love and miss her very much. Up next, Mrs. Barb Wismore. Barb was fortunate enough to be Pat's college roommate and sorority sister. Some stories you don't want to hear. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but I'm going to tell you one of them. So I want to be prepared. But anyhow, uh, Patty and I were sorority sisters at BG, and then we were roommates. She was a senior, I was a junior, so my nickname was Punk. That's what she called me, Punk. Matter of fact, I even have a little charm for my bracelets that I got one year for Christmas with Punk on it, so that's how I can remember that. But uh, we were kind of crazy at that sorority house, and uh, I was the, um, the um, pledge leader, so... I was always the one that everybody was, um, you know, all the all the, um, the the heads of all the. Well, anyway, I'll just make a long story short. We decided to go to uh, celebrate New Year's Eve one day, and instead of going to the party which we were going to go to, we got in the car and we drove to Milwaukee, <laughs> <laughs> and we passed Indiana and celebrated New Year's Eve, and then we went through. Illinois, and we celebrated New Year's Eve, <laughs> singing sorority songs and having a good old time. And we were on our way to Milwaukee because two of our best friends lived there, and we wanted to surprise them. So sure enough, we surprised them all right. And then uh, after we had something to drink and whatever to eat, we got back in the car and drove all the way back to Cleveland. And this was all in one night. <laughs> and um, so that's the kind of crazy things we did. I'm not going to tell you anything else, but uh, Patty and I lost touch with each other. And she had her whole teaching career. I had my whole teaching career. And then when I retired, I decided to do ceramic tiles and go on the art circuit. So I thought, Kent, where in the heck is that? Okay, let's see. I think I can do a show there. So I looked it up, sure enough, I go to Kent in the park. I'm doing an art show, and the next thing I know, I hear, Barb? Barb Whisper, is that you? <laughs> so we got back together again. I don't know exactly how many years ago that was, but I, I'm so happy I got back with her. I got to meet all her friends, uh, which are fabulous friends. They're, they're very close and dear to her, I'm sure. And I was just very, very happy and lucky that I could be with her in her last years. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody? Well, this is Karen Bonfiglio. Karen was our water aerobics instructor. Um, can everybody hear me? I'd rather not. Okay. Yep. Um, I've known Pat and Jan for about, I don't know, probably going on 10 years. We met at Life Center. <laughs> doing water aerobics together. And then Pat and Jan asked me to be a part of the Dragon Boat um, party. So for the last couple of years, we would drive up to Cleveland. The girls would always pick me up on the way there. And I would always laugh sitting in the back seat, listening to this spitzy little Italian crabbing uh, to Pat. Oh, you're turning the wrong way. Oh, we're not. <laughs> and Pat just remained <laughs> she always got us where we needed to go because she did have that incredible sense of direction. And it would make me think of them going to Florida and then her driving that huge RV. And I was so impressed with that. Um, but it was, I hear people talking about what a giver she was. I just, it really touched my heart because I thought, yes, that's such a big part of her. I uh, came to them a couple years ago sharing that my very best friend was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And I was very distraught by it. Um, she was starting chemo. And almost before I got those words out of my mouth, Pat went into the other room. She came back with this beautiful quilt that she had been given. I believe the gathering place had given her. 
Anyhow, she gave it to me to pass on to my friend. She had lots of words of wisdom, one of which being to really encourage my friend to keep that positive attitude that when she was going through the chemo, try to think of it as this little Pac-Man eating, you know, the, the cancer cells. So um, my girlfriend was very, very touched by that. Uh, she came through chemo very well. She's had a clean bill of health. And one of the, the things she shared with me was that hearing those words um, and that encouragement was the, the biggest thing that got her through this and knowing she needed to keep a positive attitude. Thank you. Somebody else? You're doing a great job. You want to just talk to them? Okay. All right, she's here. I know she's here. You know, she did. We talked about that, and she says, "When I pass, I'll come back as a dragonfly." I oh, kept waiting and wait. He comes over and tells us there's a dragonfly, so I'm running over. She's gone. The first dragonfly I saw when I got home was on a screen on our screened-in porch. I saw it and I said, "What is that? You?" Yeah, there, there it is, right there. Holy cow! Anyway, I took a picture of it. We were golfing the other day with our golf league, and of course there's a dragonfly flying around the green. Everybody's going, there's Pat. Pat's with us. Oh, she's, okay, get us in there, Pat. So she's, she's around. <laughs> Anybody else want to say a few words? You should give her credit for that hole in one you had in Florida, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a week, a, maybe it was two weeks after Pat had passed, and, you know, I, I was golfing in our league in Florida, and I get up to the fifth hole. 155 yards. I got my five iron. I've never gotten a hole in one. And I hit the ball and it hits the green. I'm going, oh, and it kept rolling, 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 and it falls in. How did you see that? Neither of the two ladies were with me saw it. And I'm like, oh. and the, 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 cup, the four ladies in front, they did see it. So it was really, it was an exciting thing. So I'm sure Pat was there and went doing, and it right, right into the uh, hole. So. Yes, Pat's bringing the sun for us. So, does anybody else want to say a few words? Anybody? You know, one thing about Pat's journey with her cancer is she had cancer for three years, breast cancer, it metastasized to her bone, and usually people die within two to four months, I think, or something like that. Is that right, Lisa? Pretty quick. All right. Uh, Pat hung on for three years. Until the last six months, she was pretty good. She kept saying, you know, if this is what it's like to have cancer, well, it's not so bad. Because it really wasn't that, that bad until the last, you know, few months. But we all miss her, and it was wonderful, the words that you've said. Harold is going to play again for us now, a couple songs, and then we will have another event. Right beach. 
Jerry and I went out and found the right beach. And then Tyann and I went, and we're like letting go of these balloons, and they go whop right into the hotel. I thought wasn't going to be cool. But the night we had it in Florida, or the afternoon we had it in Florida, it was like everybody stood there. We let them go. They just all went right up over the all the Gulf of Mexico, and we're like, Pat, you did a good job. And it was very, really, very really, really, really nice. So we're going to be bringing some balloons out. Uh, we're, we only have 55, and there's 120 or so of us, so everybody's not going to get one. So take a balloon for your family or a couple for your family if there's, you know, a big family. And as long as you have one for every couple people, that'll be good. Okay? And if I get these balloons, we're going to think about that. Jerry's going to say a few words. And some of the memories that you had of peanut butter squares. Take some home. If you didn't sign the guest book, go ahead and sign it. Look at the pictures and things that 